everybody jumping on in the United States and around the world. We're very happy to have you with us. Uh, we see people not only from almost probably every 50 states that we have here in the United States of America, but we also see people from abroad. We've seen New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, Ireland. It's so wonderful uh, to see the body gathering together. Hello to our moderators and our Ark of Grace team. Thank you for helping us do what we do for the Lord. We have Mr. Lou Angle here with us. It is going to get very prophetic. I am warning you. So if you love the prophetic, well, you have come to the right broadcast for that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up in prayer as we always do. And we're going to bring Lou Engel in. So Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord, we come before you this day. Father, we praise you. You are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality and might. Lord, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise that is due your precious holy name. We humble ourselves before you this day, Father, asking you to forgive us of our sins, Lord, and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Father. Lord, we all fall so short of your glory, and we praise you. Your mercies are new every single day. Lord, we acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to the earth, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the Passover lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. He willingly died at Calvary. He purchased us by the shedding of his own blood. He paid the highest price for the largest debt in history, the sins of humanity. And he rose again in three days, Father, as was prophesied, ascended back into heaven, victoriously took his rightful place at your right hand where he rules and reigns forevermore. He is our advocate without ceasing before your throne, Father, and we honor that before you this day. Father God, we welcome your presence, the presence of Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the living God, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, to fill this place, Lord, to fill where we are, Lord. Father, that the power of your presence would mightily move, that your word, Lord, would go forth ahead of us, that you would fill us with your wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of almighty God with authority now come forth in Jesus' name. Father, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter. We are most simply just the clay. We are the dust of the earth without your breath of life in us, Lord. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Let your name be glorified above all as we go forth in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen and amen. Okay, amen. Praise the Lord. I always find, and I say this a lot, I know I sound like a broken record, but when you open up in prayer and you give it over to the Lord and you put him in his rightful place and you let him go out ahead, the Lord just moves mightily. So let me give our guest here a proper introduction before we bring in. Many of you know Mr. Lou Engel. He probably is a man that needs no introduction because many of you know him, but he is the visionary and co-founder of The Call, which is a global prayer and fasting movement. He is the founder of Bound for Life, which is a pro-life ministry. He, he's based in Colorado Springs with his wife, Therese, and their seven children. God bless them. They have seven children. That 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 That's almost a full basketball team right there. You're more than halfway there. Okay. He also leads Lou Engel Ministries, and he also is doing a million woman Esther movement gathering in the nation's capital. We're going to give you all the information on that as well. It's a millionwomen.org, actually, the website. Let's bring in Mr. Lou Engel. Hello, Amanda. Hello. Thank you for having me on your program. First well, we're time, very happy to have you. Oh, first time we've met, mm -hmm. and I'm already stirred up. You have, oh, praise the Lord. See, that's what needs to happen. So uh, all glory be to God for that. So, you, well, you've been in the prophetic a long time. I mean, you have been doing this a, a, a while. Yes, we, yeah, really, we go way back, maybe 30 years where we, the Lord began to visit us and speak to us through dreams. Mm -hmm. and, and dreams have been one of the major ways that God has carried forth the movements that we're involved in. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I love the prophetic. Well, me too. There we go. We have something very much in common there. So I wanted to talk to you about then we'll get we'll get into to other things that have happened and have transpired and 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 you know all all what I like to call 
the cray cray going on in the nation. That's what I call it right now, because that's what it kind of is. Uh, but you have a million women march, right? So the website is a million women.org. So I want you to tell us about this because it's a gathering in the nation's capital. I think it would be, it would be really good for us to go back just a bit in history. Okay. Because, uh, because the, because there, it, there's a storyline to the, to the event. Sometimes we say, though, this is an event. No, this is a prophetic narrative that's been going on for 25 years with a vision that America can turn back to God. It was in 1999. Mm -hmm. I prayed a prayer. How can I turn America back to God? For one moment, I knew I had reached into heaven and God had heard me. A week, two weeks later, a woman came to me, said, you don't know who I am, but the Lord told me to pay your salary this year. Because you're going to start something with the Youth of American Prayer that will change the destiny of the nation. 24 years ago, September 2nd, on the mall in D.C., 400,000 young people gathered wow. to fast and pray for 12 hours. It was no. We told them you got to. If it rains, you stay in the rain. Soldiers fought for this nation mm -hmm. in far greater circumstances. We didn't tell anybody who the worship teams were or the speakers because we've had personality-driven religion too long. We need God, and His answer is united, massive, solemn assemblies. That began the movement of the call, and for the last twenty-four years, we have been doing solemn assemblies in stadiums and arenas, and it's now brought me to what I believe could be a final push in my own journey, in my own narrative with God. I think we've come to a final push to maybe this is the time to shift history and see the great revival in America. You want me to share the story? Oh, sure. Oh, please do. Yeah, we have a trailer too. So after you share the story, we'll play the trailer. Let's do that because it goes back okay. to 2014. In 2014, uh, uh, we were in a prophetic gathering in, in Virginia, and a woman was sharing her story how she prayed at, at Mary Washington's Rock, mm -hmm. where, uh, where Mary Washington would pray for her son, George Washington, every day during the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War. When she told her story, a bomb dropped in the place, a woman, basically uh, the mother of America, praying for her son, saved the nation. An explosion took place, and this was the word that came forth for two hours. Out, like promise keepers, a million women will go to the mall in D.C. It'll be the last stand for America. He said, they'll come in the spirit of Jeremiah 9. Death has climbed through our w windows. Call the wailing women. Mm -hmm. Teach your daughters to wail, for the children are being cut off from the streets, and it will be a last stand for America. Mm -hmm. When that word happened, I was riveted, and I've lived under the shadow of that prophecy since 2014, believing. I think, we're Amanda, we're in a hinge of history moment right now. I, believe, I believe that. Yeah, I think everybody believes this. Mm -hmm. This even President Trump is saying this is the most important election in American history. It is. And mm -hmm. I think it's all about ideologies that are coming either to be restrained or to or or to bring in God's ideology. So then in 2017, witches rose up worldwide to curse President Trump. I remember that. Do you remember this? Yeah, I do. I remember when that happened. And, and I, I thought, why are witches worldwide cursing a man that's not necessarily moral? Is he a Christian? Many think he is. All I know is God's hand has been upon him mm -hmm. for Israel, and he gave us three judges that ended Roe v. Wade. I wonder okay. if the witches understood that their blood altar at the Supreme Court was going to be challenged by this man. So I went up into the mountains of Estes Park. Some okay. people call it Esther's Park mm -hmm. to fast and pray. And I have a dream. And in this dream, as far and wide as I could see, women are coming from everywhere. Teenagers, women. And I'm looking at this and I said, this is a women's revival I'm looking at. And they're all coming to hear the book of Esther be taught. And I'm in shock watching this. 
And I have an ancient Bible, which I now understand means the days are coming when you'll receive an ancient assignment, the mm-hmm. assignment of Mordecai to mobilize this Esther movement that you're looking at. Amanda, I, I, I'm shocked by this dream. A woman stands up in the dream and she says, and these two words in the book of Esther actually mean Nazgul, N-E-Z-G-U-L. I explode out of the dream and instantly know what it means because I watched the third part of the Lord of the Rings <laughs> where the Nazgul witch king is destroying yes. the armies of men and says, no man could kill me. But in the, in the third part of the Lord of the Rings, the king's daughter takes off her helmet, lets her hair down and says, I am no man. And she pierces the Nazgul. And, and destroys the Nazgul witch king. And I know the Lord is saying there is coming a women's righteous movement that is going to break through witchcraft that are fueling the ideologies like Esther, challenging the ideologies of Haman, anti-Semitism. We had no clue that when we would mobilize this movement, that on October 7th, that Haman spirit would rise up all over the world. The anti-Semitic right. spirit. We believe we're in a global Esther movement to mm-hmm. challenge the anti-Semitism and a global Esther movement to challenge the ideology of transgenderism, the things that are taking place to come to take our children. I believe we're in an Esther moment right now for such Amen. a time as this. Amen. I do. I, I am right there with you on that. And you know, when that spirit arises, that Haman, the line Haman came from, he came from the line of Amalek when right. Saul disobeyed. When that spirit arises, then you see an Esther arise also to challenge it because Esther is the one who ultimately challenged Haman and what he was doing. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. It's, I, I've been pondering this that when Haman cast lots, to, uh, for the day in which to destroy the Jews, he 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 was involved in divination. That is divination. It's divination. Mm-hmm. So he's dealing with witchcraft. This is my dream. Mm-hmm. There's witchcraft going on behind the ideologies. He Amen. is the avatar. He is the host, the human political host that's carrying the ideology of the spirit realm. And so when Esther sees this, I believe she understood you can't deal with divination by simple politics. You have to deal with it in the spirit realm. So she calls a three day Esther fast. Mm -hmm. That fast breaks the divination. And then she's got to go publicly into the political realm, take a stand And it is when she does this that God literally breaks the power of Haman. I believe right now there are leaders in America that are the the avatars Mm. of false ideologies. They don't even understand it, but they're being influenced by spiritual powers, demonic powers. And so what happens is Esther has to do this. And so I was just with I was just with 65 women that reach influencers that reach up to 30 to 50 million women across the nation. I preached to them the other day in New York City and they exploded and went and they're calling a three-day Esther fast, July 29th, 30th, and 31st. What if 10 million women out of that group would rise up and fast three days? Could we start to see a breakthrough even in the political realm that's coming? even in the elections and even over the demonic ideologies that are coming to kill our children, destroy our children. We are believing it's Esther's time. Amen to that. We actually have a trailer we're going to play for a moment and then we'll come back about this. Everyone knows America is in a time of crisis. The world is in a time of crisis. In the crisis, families, crisis of nations, United fasting and prayer has always shifted history. It was in the 2014 time, an explosion of prophecy took place that a million women would go to the mall and it would be a last stand 
for America. Esther was raised up at a time that if there wasn't a ship, they would lose a whole nation. We're calling every man of Mordecai, every woman in Esther, come to the mall on the Day of Atonement and dare to believe that God will shift history, save a nation as we pray, fast, and stand on behalf of the children, your families, and your nation. For such a time as this, you've been brought into the kingdom. Amen. That's amazing. Amazing. And the fact it's on Yom Kippur, the, oh. the Day of Atonement, the holiest day on the Jewish calendar, they actually believe, and I know you know this, but they actually believe that when Rosh Hashanah happens and you have the 10 days of awe that lead to it, that a trial opens. The Jews believe the Lord holds a trial oh. in the heavens. This is what they believe. They hold a trial in the heavens for 10 days, and the Day of Atonement is the verdict. I didn't know that, that they yes. called it at 10 days of a trial. The yes, it's 10 days of all, but it's really a trial that begins once Rosh Hashanah happens. I've been pondering that very thing. It's a court case over America. Yes. Will America receive mercy or America receive judgment? Talk to me more about this. This is when the high priest would go in through the veil. Yes. Holy and offer the blood on behalf of the salvation yes. of the nation. Now, this mystery gets even deeper. I actually taught on this. Uh, it must have been a month and a half or two months ago. But the mystery of the two goats on Yom Kippur, right? And the high priest would present two goats. Right. And he would cast lots. He'd pull out lots. One would be released and one would fall on Yom Kippur. Which is, which is interesting when you think about, you know, our election system and what we're facing right now. This mystery of the two goats really applies to what's happening right now. And it ties directly as well to Yom Kippur. But yes, during those 10 days of awe, a trial takes place. The Jews believe God opens a trial and it concludes on Yom Kippur. This is incredible. I haven't heard that be said. I've always felt that this day coming is a it's a day of, of a court where the courts are seated, the books are open, and a judgment right. is going to be made on behalf of the nation. I read something recently from an ancient rabbi, not a messianic rabbi, that Yom Kippur is connected to the Day of Atonement. I mean, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is connected to Purim. Yom Kippur. A day like Pur Purim, both of them use the casting of the lots. They do, I, both of them. And I felt like the Lord say, because they call Yom Kippur the fast. It is the united, massive fasting praying. Derek Prince, who was uh, like the mentor to Derek me, Prince. he said this, that in the crisis of nations, united collective fasting and prayer, like in the days of Esther, are the days that shift history and save a nation from a book called Shaping History through prayer and fasting. So when I was praying, when do I hold this day? I felt like the Lord said, Lou, it's got to be on the Day of Atonement. Can you imagine, Amanda, can you imagine a million women and their Mordecais? Maybe it'll be 100,000. I just, we're calling a million. A communion service like has never been seen before. Amen. So we would exalt the blood who judges the gods of Egypt. Could God do a miracle, break the witchcraft, and Amen. loose it into a day of revival and awakening? Wow. Oh, God is, is more than able. He is more than able to do that. His power is infinite. He is omniscient, omnipotent. He's the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the ending. And even more interesting to, to play prophetic connect the dots here, because I like to play prophetic connect the yeah. dots a lot. Okay. The day before Yom Kippur, the eve before Yom Kippur, within this 10 days of awe, the eve before it, a comet is coming into Earth's view that has not been seen in thousands of years, I believe. No. And I'm calling it the Yom Kippur comet. I, ta I, I talked about this. So there's a comet that has not been seen that will be in Earth's view the eve before Yom Kippur. Oh, this is incredible. Jonathan Kahn has talked in his book, The Return of the Gods, about the goddess Ishtar and yes. how she has fueled the ideologies of transgenderism, homosexuality, mm -hmm. uh, 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 prostitution, uh, pornography. 
I have been feeling like, because Esther was named after Ishtar, most scholars believe that. Could it be that Esther was being sent sex trafficked and she was in a harem? Could it be that a woman under the culture, in the culture of Ishtar, and Esther would rise up to overthrow that very culture? And Jonathan Khan said, I believe that day when the Esther is gathering, this Ishtar spirit will begin to be nullified. And her name, Ishtar, is the star of the morning and the evening star. But so is Esther. She is the woman named the star. Could it be that this comet is the war in the heavens? Come on. Hey, but God. <laughs> It is. Now, here, we'll go even further with this. We're going to go even further with this. Oh. Okay. And I love Rabbi Jonathan. He's a friend of mine, and, and I love him very much. And so Nineveh was where the main temple of Ishtar was. So the main temple of Ishtar was in Nineveh. So right before Jonah shows up to pronounce judgment on Nineveh, they have a full solar eclipse. And then Jonah shows up and says, 40 days and this city will be destroyed. That main temple is where, yes, the men dressed up as women. They consider themselves non-binary. Uh, they dressed up as women in ceremonies. They did things of that nature. She was also considered the, and I call her the false goddess because that's what she is, of yeah. divine law. Now, how that ties to today is January 2023. A golden statue that eerily resembled Ishtar was placed upon the appellate courthouse in New York City. And this was before the indictments came down. This statue was raised, right? And the New York Times carried a headline that said, move over, Moses. There's a new female lawgiver in town. And it was Ishtar. And... What's even crazier is seven years prior, they put the Arch of Baal on that soil. Right. And Ishtar is Baal's counterpart. Right. Seven years later, they raise that statue. And the enemy thinks we ain't going to see it. So seven years later, they raise that statue. They put it above where? The courthouse. What represents the law. Trying to raise itself above the law of this nation and hijack it and take it over incredible amanda you're giving me insight this is well and there's going God. to be a comet the night before yeah look at yeah go research it there's a comet that is showing up i called it the yom kippur comet the eve before the day of atonement deborah in deborah's old war the stars fought from heaven i'm wondering <laughs> If God is actually unveiling a spiritual uh, uh, confrontation that is taking place in this day. So interesting. I received a prophetic word in 1989. A man named Bob Jones had an encounter with God, a, a trance vision. He saw 100,000 LGBTQ being saved and transformed. The love of God invaded this community. He said they love God so much. He said they're the eagles that fly in the heavens and get revelation, the prophets. But unless you have the wild geese intercessors flying through in V formation, breaking through the powers of darkness in the second heaven, Amen. you don't see the manifestation of the eagle's vision. He said to me, Lou, your assignment is 100,000, just the first wave of a great revival and awakening that's coming. So we fasted 40 days at the beginning of last year, praying for 100,000 LGBTQ to be saved and transformed by the love of God. At the end of that fast, I said to the Lord, you gave us revelation and how to stand in front of the Supreme Court to challenge abortion with the blood of Jesus. I Amen. said, Lord, if I'm your friend, would you give me a dream tonight and show me how I can reach 100,000 LGBTQ for the love of God? And I have a dream, and it's two words, but it's an explosion. Delta factor. I wake up and I said, God, I know that was you, but I don't know what delta factor is. So if, if I'm your friend, would you give me another dream when I fall asleep and tell me what delta factor means? I have another dream. And in the dream, I'm in this hallway, and a tall, strong uh, uh, military officer walks by me, and I said, excuse me, sir, what's a delta factor? And he said, it's the leader of a million. I wake up and I know the cries of a million women 
are going to begin to reach out to their children and they're going to be they're going to get saved and the nations will be saved by the woman in travail the i believe when roe v wade fell that was closed and the womb of america was opened we're Amen. in the days of the awakening so here's the thing i was reading a book by francis frangipain called this day we fight on the lord of the rings and he said, I looked for every revival to see if there was a prayer movement that preceded it. He said, I found one all but the Jesus movement of the 70s. So he said, I asked the Lord, he writes it in his book, why wasn't there a, a, a prayer movement for the Jesus movement of the 70s where all the hippies and the outcasts yeah. were being saved? And he said, the Lord answered him and he writes about it. And he says, oh, I had my prayer movement. You see, the mothers of America were losing their kids to the countercultural ideologies of the 60s. And he writes, and I raised up a million women to cry out to me for their children. And I answered them with the 70s Jesus movement. When I read this, I know there is another massive awakening coming. And wouldn't it be like God to challenge Ishtar? And get the spoil of the sons and daughters who have come under this ideology. Oh, Amanda, I have hope that America can turn back to God. I'm, I have hope. I have absolute hope America can indeed turn back to God. This is ancient demons you're we're dealing with these are very ancient they have recycled themselves for every generation they have risen up and have changed the cover of the book in every generation even though the contents are the same and they have done this and they have done this in this generation and who did they use in this generation the young they use the young to do their bidding the universities for me have become the temples of Baal and Ishtar Colleges have become the temples of Baal and Ishtar, and they are spoon feeding these kids this demonic ideology and getting them then to spew it out into the atmosphere in unison. So, so you, you're, you're looking at also a Babel situation where they're coming together in unison, right? Wow. Of one mind, of one accord to try to build Babel to challenge Almighty God. Right. And what did he do? He confused their language. He broke it up. He scattered it. But but it took him, it took, how am I going to put this? I'm thinking how to put this right now. It took them all coming together and doing that, right? In, in, in that wicked way. Right. For that to finally be broken. So the Lord allowed them to come together and do that so he could come down and demonstrate his power and scatter them absolutely and, and this is what we're looking at and you look at at, at the book of nehemiah mm -hmm. he's the when when war comes to the gates he said let the trumpet player be next to me when you hear the sound of the trumpet gather to me there there the lord will fight for us there are moments in history where god says you must gather or mm -hmm. i won't fight so you've got to bring. I, I was I, I was going to mobilize in, in a in a meeting in uh, in Pasadena, and and I, I the Lord said you must push go right now. It was four thirteen. I didn't put it together. April thirteenth. You must push go right now. You must mobilize a million esters. You don't have money. You don't have staff. But you must push go. I'm weeping on the plane. I know the Lord has called me. The next plane I pick up, I'm sitting in the window seat. And I, I pray this prayer, Lord, we cannot just have white Esther's gathering. The, the African-American, Hispanic Esther must gather together. I said, please confirm to me that the African-American Esther's are going to come. I'm sitting in that window seat. An African-American lady sits next to me immediately. She's reading a book. I can't see the title. And I said, excuse me, ma'am, what's the name of the book you're reading? She holds it up, the Esther anointing. Wow, Ooh, that's confirmation. Praise that God. That evening, I met uh, this J Jenny Donnelly, who's carrying this Don't Mess With Our Kids movement. A real Esther Reformation movement is being commissioned on, on and Cheon, my pastor, is commissioning her into her apostolic role. And my wife texts her and me at the same time. She said, do you get it? It's April 13th. It's Esther 413. Oh, 
Do not think you can hide in your palaces. Do not think you can hide in your homeschools. They're coming for your homeschools. They are. Oh, no, arrive. they are. And the next morning, I preached on 414. Who knows for such a time as this, you've been brought into the kingdom. Cindy Jacobs is there. She stands up and begins roaring. The mama bears are rising. The mama bears are coming to save America. I'm calling as far and wide every man of Mordecai, every woman in Esther to gather together. If you can't, it'll be live streamed, but there's something about gathering. Other it nations is. are also being caught up into it. Could we be in a moment where God is loosing the sound of the trumpet and he will fight for us? Amen. The Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Here it is. Right? Is it, isn't that an Exodus? Which it's in the Old Testament, I know that, but but it says the Lord will fight for you. Interesting about the three day fast. Come on. So before Father's Day that weekend, the Lord instructed me to call for a three day fast. Hmm. He instructed me to do this. I said okay, and I called for this three day fast. I think it was June fourteenth, fifteenth, and sixteenth. It was something like that. Not knowing. Donald Trump's birthday was during that weekend. Had no clue. And the Lord's telling me, you need to call for this fast. Wow. In June, you need to call for it now. So I called for it. I said, we're, we're fasting three days. If you can fast the whole three days, fast. If you can fast 12, whatever you can do, I need you to do. Right. And that was the weekend of Father's Day. And then the weekend of Donald Trump's birthday. And we see what ha we see what just transpired, and so it it, it it. But these three day fasts are powerful. They when God tells you to call for it, and God anoints it, and God ordains it, there is reason for it that shifts catastrophic events from happening. I believe it. Yeah. I believe with all my heart. I believe you heard God, and I believe when we in 2017 Praise we raised up a three day Esther fast. It went viral across the world but i believe it's not enough to have an event or one fast we have to go public esther mm -hmm. could not just fast she had to go public and i believe god is raising up women to go public into the school boards of america they're going into into the political realms esther is being promoted and there's coming a showdown i even what's coming into the next three months with this coming election we oh, we can get into that. Yes, about an Esther Ishtar showdown. Yeah, I, you are a hundred percent. I mean, spot on. This is a showdown between Esther and Ishtar. Uh, it, it, even if we look at a lot of the court cases, right? That Donald Trump was who was prosecuting them? Women. Yeah. Who was prosecuting against him? Women. It was. It, it was fascinating. But it, it, I'm in New York. So right. I'm I'm in the hub of it. What's yes. going on right now? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting atmosphere, New York to be in. But the, because Ishtar and that spirit has arisen, well, you're right. The, the 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 antithesis of that would be to raise up Esther. There you go. To speak and, it out. To speak and, against it. And Amanda, help me on this. With yeah. Jonathan Khan, I felt led that to go to New York City for 40 days prior to this. Oh, Dude. I'm only an hour and a half from there. Oh, maybe, maybe during that time I could connect. We that could, would be great. But we, we could connect. But I felt like the Lord said, I want you to go and fast. However, God, I, I, I know my calling is, it is extended 40 day fast. Uh, I don't always do it all that well, but I've seen victories take place even in governmental shifts on those kinds of fasts. I felt like the Lord said, go to New York. Because that is where the the gateway, Jonathan Kahn says, Stonewall was the gateway uh, to uh, uh, was the gateway to that spirit coming into America. And but I, he said to me, I didn't realize that that in the Jewish understanding, forty days before Yom Kippur is forty days of repentance. Yes, it's the people prepare themselves for forty days, and I would like to encourage all of those that are going. All of us need to be involved in this thing because I believe it's a, in, a national assignment. I would like to encourage people for 40 days, live a different way. 
Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Those who have clean hands and a pure, uh, uh, a pure, uh, a pure heart. Let's go into repentance and stand before God on that day, daring to believe that God will be giving us a mercy in America in a great revival. I'll say one other thing. 2020 I had a dream. And in the dream, I was the president of the United States. Oh, wow. Now, that would be a disaster. <laughs> but I knew what the Lord was saying. I'm going to get my intercessors into a place of authority. Amen. Over even the elections. I believe he's saying this. And in the dream, I'm the president. I'm on the mall in D.C. And I can't see them, but there's like a million people on the mall that have gathered to pray. And I'm supposed to address this massive gathering, and but I don't know what to say. And so I stand up to the podium, and I simply lifted my hands, and the whole crowd begins chanting, Revival! Revival! Could, we, could it be this very moment this is pointing to? Gain the authority in the heavens Amen. and loose a revival and awakening. I believe we could be in the days of a great salvation for America. I believe that. And something happened that prophetically is pointing at this. And it happened in Texas. Now, Texas and New York are tied to each other mm. because the larger Ishtar looking statue was displayed in a park in New York and then was sent to Texas. Okay. So there's the one atop the New York city, the appellate courthouse, and then you have that other one and it was sent and it's called, I believe witness is the name of the, of this. Okay. So it's taken to Texas. It's taken to Houston. Right. And hurricane barrel comes through. Now I remember that name barrel from Ezekiel. I'm like, wait a second. I remember that name. It was in the book of Ezekiel. So barrel comes through and the head of this statue gets taken off. <laughs> the head of the statue. And this is in the past two weeks. Was taken off. I got cut off at the up. head. That's astounding. And it, it reminded me of when the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant during battle, right? And they put it in the temple of Dagon. And what does the Lord do? He throws him down once and then he put him back up and then throws him down again, but takes off his head and his hands. Wow. And so it reminded me of that, of I'm going to start, you know, picking apart and, and, and throwing down your idols that you have raised up and these ancient demons that have raised up because you have a covenant and I want it back. Come on, That's man. my Ark of the Covenant, says the Lord. That is mine. It is his property and he wants it back. And this is why you're beginning to see these things happen during this time in the second half of the year. Wow, this is astounding. Even the whole book of Esther, is, even though the name of God is not even named in the book, what you see is the uh, behind it all is the dancing hand of providence. When, when Trump turned his head, mm -hmm. that was the dancing hand of providence. Everybody mm -hmm. realizes it's, it's God. You got to, you got you got even the uninitiated understand that this is some kind of a miracle i believe we're in the days where providence is kicking in as it was in the days of esther the whole thing god is setting up something this is what we're believing and so lord oh god the lord of history let him arise over america wow and let his enemies be scattered let, let god arise and let his enemies be scattered wow. in this time and you know i had this and we we could talk about this real quick because what happened uh with divine providence with president trump and how the lord alone saved his life and then we have what just happened recently which is Biden dropping out of the race. Now, the Lord had warned, and I remember putting the word out, April 2023, this upcoming election cycle is going to be the most head-scratching and baffling you have ever seen. And it is not disappointed with that. But these things have just occurred. Uh, and this is a good segue into this. So I want to, I want to give you the floor first, and then I will, I will read a couple of excerpts. Oh, why don't you go ahead? Let me do it? Yeah. Okay. 
All right. So the first is October 6, 2022. So this is almost two years old. And then we have one that's almost four years old. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, a strange plan shall begin to unfold in your nation. Strange indeed, says the Lord, for the liberalness thinks it has found a loophole to thread the needle, to bait and switch, to under the guise of deception, illness, and timing can seamlessly switch leadership. This is back in 2022. However, says the Lord, they have miscalculated their timing, and that's capitalized. Demon squabble, and you shall see these movements who claim to advocate suddenly turn on each other and infight and accuse and weaken their own agenda. For, says the Lord, it is time to indeed deal with the rainbow. It is time to fracture their foundation, to expose the inner workings of the laundering that has occurred, to expose the disturbing root that has allowed pride to swell. However, says the Lord of hosts, pride, that's capital, cometh before the fall. Haughtiness and pride, says the Lord, has come to the edge of a destructive cliff. And now that agenda shall suffer one of the biggest blows it ever has and shall be smeared by its own, says the Lord. Probably because they turn on them and get saved like you were talking about. Uh, for that flag has waved in the face pridefully of this nation long enough and humble pie indeed shall be served for their insatiable lust to harm and hurt my capital creation and the innocent as well for what they have done to the little ones. Their millstone has been etched with the charges at hand and it shall be hung around the neck of that movement as it is gut open and all their inner workings come forth as even this is connected. He says it's connected to Ukraine as well because their flags were side by side. And so that's the first, that was from October, 2022. Wow. So praise the Lord. Amazing. And I want, I want to see if I can fight because the bit, yeah, because we're watching the bait and switch happen in real time. We're watching this now, you know, occur. And so I'm looking. Uh, oh, here it is. OK, this is from October 6, 2020. So this was before the 2020 election. And I call this the Clash of the Titans word. The Lord had me give it from on top of a mountain in Wyndham, New York. He had me go live and deliver this word. So I was on top of a mountain when this happened. So and that happens to be my husband's birthday too, October 6. So this was kind of interesting. So October 6, 2020, there shall be a clash of the titans in Washington, D.C., the likes of which has never been seen. Historic, says the Lord of hosts this day. However, in clashes, there shall come forth casualties and there shall be those exposed in both parties who have become liaisons for wicked interests of foreign entities, says the Lord of hosts this day. Both parties, that's capitalized. Yeah. And a core shall arise and come forth, a core that fights and stands for truth. My capital word of truth, says the Lord. My truth shall go forth in the mist and expose a chain gang of players all working together to overthrow not only the foundation of the United States of America, but capital, all sense of morality and faith in God. They are looking for a demolition, says the Lord, and a demolition they shall receive upon their own heads. Watch and see, says the Lord of hosts this day. The trumpet will sound, the trumpet will sound in the mist. The trumpet will sound, says the Lord. For I, the Lord, am making an unexpected move that will catch the enemy, his alliance, and those involved in the darkest of dealings off guard, off kilter, a surprise attack. And that's capital. And I think that's when he turned Trump and their whole plan fell because that was a surprise attack. And I think this has something to do with it. Shall pierce and puncture their plans. They will draw their own blood for those spirits they have been conjuring and calling upon are out for blood and highly competitive my capital children. This is where you shall see the most shocking infighting occurring within groups. There is one major player in particular who shall fall, uh, fall fast and hard, branded for what they are, says the Lord of hosts this day. And then he was, he talked about a, a, a rival nominee arising and a false convert who would do the, the bidding of the wicked on the bench. So he went into that after that part. Wow. Amazing. That was 2020. So you saw this that's going on right now. Yes, and all glory and that, be to God, because there's no way I could have seen it. And that's what my dream was. It was 2020. And wow. I, yeah, 2020. The, oh, my, my, my. You and I were seeing different parts. Exactly. Of the same block of time. And I, I didn't know it then, I, I, but in the dream, there's this massive gathering on the mall. There was no massive gathering on the mall since 2020, uh, 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 except Jonathan 
except Jonathan Collins. Yes. Something fell. He told me he believed on that day of the return, Molech fell. There was a Praise Molech God. spirit fell. Of course, we were in there 18 years standing in front of the Supreme Court. And then I and then he says to me, I believe that this Ishtar is going to fall. I wonder if I was seen in 2020, this massive gathering. I think you that were. would be begin to chant, proclaim, decree something in the heavens, revival, revival. Could it be that the LGBT would be at the forefront of this revival? Years ago, I was preaching and a young man stood up, interrupted me and says, you have no right to tell us struggling with same sex desires that we can't have our civil rights unless you can give us the liberty and freedom the Bible promises. And I knew the Lord was laying a gauntlet to the church. You're going to step into a realm of faith and authority, healing and deliverance. Just recently, I was on the plane with a young gal. I, I ended up talking with her. It's an incredible conversation. And then she just shared it. She says, I love Jesus, but I don't know how to get free of this same sex desire. There is a groan in the millions. Jesus is hearing the groans of the mothers. He's hearing the groans of the children. And I believe, like in the days of Moses, I am coming down. I have heard their groans. Amanda, we're in quite a day, and you've seen it beforehand. Praise the Lord. I mean, wow. it is it is one of the most incredible uh, times in history of the United States of America, I believe. And the Lord is, you know, he, he's raising up. Those in the prophetic who, you know, who saw it ahead of time and who are now there to be a prophetic voice in the midst of the wilderness and what's happening. You know, I, I it's interesting, but if you look at this biblically too, this precedent, when a nation is at stake, the Lord sends the prophetic in like an army, like a blazing army. It's not just we're coming in quietly. We're coming in like a blazing army uh, in order to fight for. I've always kingdom. been, I've been always stirred. That in the darkest government of Israel's history, Ahab and Jezebel, yeah, in steps the greatest prophet in history. Now Elijah, mm -hmm. I think we're in a now Elijah moment. We're in a now Esther moment, Amen. a defining moment. And those who don't sleep during the days of crisis, their names become blazing on the internal pages of heaven. It's time for the ones that nobody even knows to take their stand in front in the court of heaven. Amen. And legislate the future of this nation. I pray to prayer. How can I turn America back to God? I got to believe that he will not fashion my soul to a dead end vision. We're in the no. days of attorney. We are, we are, and we are in a, in a day where it requires measures to match what we are up against. It requires that measure. It requires that faith. It requires us to go deeper with the Lord. The Lord is calling us out deeper. Are we willing yeah. to go deeper? Are we willing to do it? That's the question. And we have to be at this moment in time because there is a robbery in progress of this nation. And it has to be stopped. So interesting. Sometimes I, some, I, I'm thinking maybe the nations are con more concerned about America than even many of us in, in, in our own nation. We received a phone call from a leader of intercessors in Egypt who's connected to a coalition that has 110 million intercessors worldwide. He calls us. He's concerned. He said we, the leaders are concerned for America, for the elections, he said. We want to raise up on one day 110 million intercessors to fast and to pray for America on September 22nd. Uh, 110 million believers are going to be praying for America. And then it's 21 days right to the Day of Atonement. See? And we're calling a 21-day fast. Brothers and sisters. That's amazing. Even the world understands the earth is in a tilting point. There are 65 to 70 worldwide elections this year. Everything's turning. We must win the battle of the heavens in prayer right now. I want to encourage people, join us on, on September 22nd and then go into this 21-day Daniel season. 
Amen. That literally Cyruses are shifted. Governmental leaders, principalities and powers in cosmic conflict. These are those kinds of days. They absolutely are. We are in one of the greatest changing of the guards in Earth's history. We are seeing it happen now. Uh, it is in, it is incredible. It is powerful. It is necessary. Yes. It has to happen. This has to happen. There's no other there's no other way around it. There there's no extended time here for the it has to happen now. Right. Yes. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. This has been amazing. We're almost at an hour. Amanda, this I feel <laughs> I, I actually felt when I get on, and that's why I said it to you. Yeah. Let's just go back and forth. You fed me with some fire today. Well, that's thank you. You did too. Ten days. Praise wow. the Lord. Praise the Lord. You did too. You stirred me up. Praise the Lord. See, iron sharpens iron. Yes, exactly. It gets together and you get stirred up and all glory be to God for that. And yes. hopefully I'll see you when you come to New York. That I would love to do that. I'll get my team looking how maybe we could make a connection together. Wonderful. That would be so amazing. Thank uh, you so much for joining us. Thank you for Mr. having Lee me Angle. on amillionwomen.org. There it is. There it is. Please join. It's in the Capitol. And what's the date again? October 12th, Yom Kippur, Yom the Kippur. Day of Atonement. It's 10 hours. Okay. It's 10, 10 hours. hours in the capital. It's 10 hours. It's, it's a sacrifice. It's a fast. We don't come here for a blessing. We're coming here to move history. That's Amen. the heartbeat of it. Thank you, Amanda. Thank bless you. you. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Engel. All right. Bye-bye now. That was my first time ever meeting Mr. Lou Engel, and wow, that was amazing. He and 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 I I've known of Lou for a long time, but it's just it's amazing to see how others move in the prophetic. So if you can be a part of this and come to the nation's capital on the Day of Atonement, please do. I do believe this is crucial. This is important. This is about the ecclesia coming together and bombarding the court of heaven and crying out to almighty God for the dethroning of Ishtar in this nation, because Ishtar has, has tried to raise itself up as an Athaliah of sorts in the nation. And we're watching that happen right now with what just happened with the bait and switch and Biden being swapped out. And now come Kamala being endorsed, heading into the DNC. So we've seen this. We have. We are seeing this real time, and this is why this is so crucial. Once again, you can go to a millionwomen.org to learn more. And thank you so much for joining us today. This has certainly been amazing. Uh, maybe we will put up. Let's see who we're going to put up at the end today. We oh, we can put up Give a Derm. We can put up Give a Derm. So this is Givaderm. It is a all natural skincare line that I absolutely love. And it is run by believers, women who are not only amazing, but they love the Lord. You can go to arcofgrace.org forward slash ministry dash partners. Use promo code ARC10. You get a 10% discount. This really is food for your face. I have my husband now using the line. Now he, he started picking out and taking from what the give a derm ladies were sending me. So now they have to send Chris a little care package so he doesn't pick off all of my stuff because now he loves using it too. So yes, men out there, you can use this also. Men and women can use it and it's amazing. So praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us today. And another thank you to Mr. Lou Engel for coming on. God bless you all. Keep the faith. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter six. Psalm 91, I say it every single day, I encourage you to say it every single day. Also Psalm 23, there's Psalm 34, Psalm 51, created me a clean heart, oh God, I speak that a lot. Uh, I think we should. Our hearts need to be cleansed constantly. We are in the flesh uh, and we need to be cleansed of that as well. Also, Ephesians 1 and 3, wonderful chapters to read, but also in the first few pages of the Believer's Authority by Pastor Kenneth Hagin. There are scriptures in those chapters that I speak every single day, as well as the Lord's prayer. Jesus taught his disciples to pray that way. There's an order to that prayer that should be a part of our prayer life. So I encourage you to do that as well. Oh, thank you everyone so much again for joining us. And we appreciate that you come on with us, that you take the time uh, to gather together as the body, the ecclesia, uh, and to join together and pray uh, and come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And I very much appreciate that. So have a wonderful rest of your evening. We love you and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.
Hello everyone, Amanda Grace here. So as many of you know, Dr. Mark Sherwood and Dr. Michelle Sherwood of the Functional Medical Institute are mine and Chris's doctors. And so I went to Dr. Sherwood with a problem that I was seeing, not only with, with what I was going through, but with what other women were going through concerning their metabolism, concerning energy, concerning their hormones. And so we put our heads together and we are very happy now to finally be able to present to you Rafa for women. Rafa means healer in Hebrew. Chào mừng các bạn đến với kênh của mình. Hôm nay mình sẽ đem đến cho các bạn một mẫu được trang trí với hoa tiết hoa kẹp cảnh và được sử dụng bằng chất liệu dãy A bộ màu. Bây giờ xin mời các bạn theo dõi cách làm. Ở đây nguyên liệu các bạn cần chuẩn bị gồm có dãy màu A4, một dây kẹo cắt và số mảnh keo nến. Ở đây mình đã cắt và chuẩn bị trừ 3 phần dãy hình vuông kết thước mỗi cành tầm 10 cm và hai hình dãy hình vuông kết thước một cành tầm khoảng 8 cm và đây mình sử dụng dãy màu đỏ bây giờ mình sẽ hướng dẫn cho các bạn cách à, gấp và cắt một bông hoa có tạm cảnh hoa với nẹp hoa gấp đặc biệt bây giờ mình sẽ gấp ba lần hình tam giác kéo và cắt tạo hình một cạnh hoa có ba nhẹ cấp ở trên trước tiên thì mình sẽ cắt một cạnh hoa có nhẹ cống hơi thẳng ở phần mặt trước và sau đó mình sẽ cắt ba phần nên mình cắt cho bằng hình đây, mình sẽ làm nhẹ của mình cống nhẹ ở đầu cạnh hoa Và khi mình mở ra thì mình sẽ có một bông hoa như quan thành trên màn hình mình sẽ cắt đều ở phần đầu cạnh hoa làm cho hoa chúng ta có nhẹ hơn là hơn và mở hơn tương tự như vậy với nắm phần nhẹ còn lại ta đi cắt như phần nhẹ đầu tiên cắt gấp ba lần hình tam giác sau đó cắt một cạnh hoa có lớp mặt phẳng băng ở trước ở đầu đây và rồi cắt cắt chiều cũng là nhẹ đây chúng ta có cạnh hoa thứ hai và với cả phần cạnh hoa còn lại 